Black Girls Podcast, a weekly conversation about mental health, personal development, and all the small decisions we can make to become the best possible versions of ourselves. I'm your host, Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, a licensed psychologist in Atlanta, Georgia. For more information or to find a therapist in your area, visit our website at therapyforblackgirls.com. While I hope you love listening to and learning from the podcast, it is not meant to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for joining me for session 282 of the Therapy for Black Girls podcast. We'll get right into our conversation after a word from our sponsors. Life with migraine attacks can mean missing out on big moments with friends and family. Thankfully, there's Nurtec ODT Remegipant 75 milligrams, the only medication that's proven to treat a migraine attack and prevent episodic migraines in adults. Get back to enjoying life with Nurtec ODT, the all-in-one medication. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec ODT or any of its ingredients. The most common side effects were nausea, indigestion, and stomach pain. Talk to a doctor about Nurtec ODT. For important safety, prescribing, and patient information, visit nurtec.com. Do you want to win two tickets to the FIFA World Cup 2022 in Qatar? Frito-Lay is giving you the chance to make history by joining their Pass the Ball Challenge. Explore the ever-growing community on the Golden World Soccer Ball. Then, pass the ball to fellow fans to score additional entries. Scan the QR code on specially marked bags of Lay's, Cheetos, or Doritos, or visit Frito-LaySCore.com. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of 50 USDC. 18 plus grand prize entry deadline, 11 10, 22. Entries received after 11 10, 22 are only eligible for secondary prizes. See rules at Frito-LaySCore.com. Imagine a sharp, stabbing pain on your skin. Sounds like a nightmare, right? While individual experiences may vary, it's how some people describe shingles. This painful blistering rash could interrupt your life for weeks. It could even force you to cancel social events or weekend plans. Over 99% of adults 50 years or older already carry the virus that causes shingles. One in three people will get it in their lifetime. Why wait? Ask your doctor or pharmacist about shingles today. Whether you're bringing a plus one to this year's family dinner are planning to spend the holidays with the cousins you haven't seen in years, there is one thing for certain. Blending new family members with old traditions can be tricky, as if spending the holidays with your family isn't hard enough. This week, I'm joined by Jordan A. Madison, licensed clinical marriage and family therapist and contributing writer to the Therapy for Black Girls blog. You may also remember Jordan's voice if you listened to our holiday episode last year, session 186, The Joy of Jingle Jangle. In this week's session, Jordan and I's conversation explores some of the more common feelings associated with blending families for the first time, what about the holidays overall can cause tension amongst family members, how you can maintain your wellness practices while other people are staying in your home or if you're staying in someone else's, and telling your family you're not coming home for the holidays. If something resonates with you while enjoying our conversation, please share it with us on social media using the hashtag TBG in session. Or join us over in the sister circle to talk more in depth about the episode. You can join us at community.therapyforblackgirls.com. Here's our conversation. Thank you so much for joining us again, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, I feel like you are our special holiday guest coming in (laughs) to talk about all things holidays. Last time we talked about Jingle Jangle, which is still one of my favorites for sure but this year we're going to get into something a little different so we have a handful of community members who are planning to blend families for the first time this Mm -hmm. holiday season so some people are like meeting their significant others family members for the first time other people are like hosting the holidays for the first time and maybe in-laws are coming together and so I wanted to have you on to talk about how we can really take care of ourselves during this time, but also if you could share some helpful tips for people who are preparing for this moment in their lives. Of course, holiday season is extremely exciting, but it can also be nerve wracking and stressful for a lot of people, especially when it comes to blending families. So definitely can understand that. Mm -hmm. So what would you say are some of the common feelings that are associated with blending families for the first time? 
So one, I think, is just like nervousness. Is this person going to like me? Is their family going to accept me? Do we have some of the same traditions? Are we going to like the same food, the same mixes, things like that? And I think other things come up can be just, you know, sometimes there's maybe insecurities or comparing your family to theirs sometimes. I think sometimes it can get a little like, my family does it this way and your family does it that way. Do I have to concede and give in? Do I like stick to what I'm doing? And I think for couples, especially for the first time, it can sometimes be a little nerve wracking. Like how do we assert ourselves as a couple in this space together? Because typically when we go to our family of origin, we kind of fall back into being not the little kid per se, but we fall back into whatever role we usually have in our family. And so when you're adding another person, it can feel a little like how do I navigate still being the baby of the family, but also now here's my partner and I need to assert myself and make sure that you respect our boundaries, you respect our relationship. Mm -hmm. That's a whole word there. <laughs> so how would you say, how would you say that people can go about best preparing themselves? So are there certain conversations they should have? Like mm -hmm. what kinds of things do they need to do to prepare themselves for this? So the first thing that comes to mind is having like a code word. So <laughs> maybe if things feel a little tense or get too hectic or you need a break, like you and your partner having a special word, phrase, maybe gesture that signals, hey, we need to regroup. I think the biggest thing to remember when blending families and during the holiday season is that you and your partner are a team. So you two are approaching this together. It's going to be nerve wracking for both of you. Obviously, I do think having conversations would be helpful first. And maybe those conversations look like are there any family dynamics that I should know about or are there certain things that maybe your parents don't like or that make them uncomfortable? Any topics that are like hot topics in your family, right? Because for some families, especially given the recent political climate, some families don't discuss politics, right? Like, are there certain things that we just stray away from or that I should know not to bring up? Because maybe in my family, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but in your family, it can cause World War III. So what are some things that I need to be aware of? And then I think having conversations even after the dinner or after the holidays of like, how was that for you? What are things that you noticed? Because I do think seeing your partner around their family helps you to understand more family dynamics. It helps you to understand maybe why your partner does certain things or sees things a certain way. And so I think a check-in before and after is really helpful. Mm -hmm. So what if I notice something in this blended family mm -hmm. holiday that I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like that about my partner. Like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't anticipate that he would behave this way. Mm -hmm. So how would you have that conversation like as a post check in? Like, what are some ways to maybe point out like some concerns maybe that you noticed as a part of that? I would definitely say to wait until after the holidays. Right. Because bringing it up in the middle of it, I don't know if that would be received as well. You two are both probably stressed and things like that. I would say bringing it up after and approaching it with curiosity, right? So instead of a, why did you act like this? Or you were acting funny, I didn't like that. Maybe like, hey, I noticed that when your mom walked through the door, you seemed to get a little quieter. You didn't seem as assertive as you usually are. What's that about? Or is that something that you noticed too? Is that something that usually comes up for you? Because maybe it's something that they did because they're also nervous or maybe it is a family dynamic that you're like, we need to kind of talk through this, right? And so I think that approaching things with curiosity, with like, this is what I've noticed. Has anyone else in your family noticed this too? Because sometimes when we're a part of our own family, we don't always see the patterns or the different nuances, whereas someone on the outside looking in is able to call some stuff out. Obviously approaching it with, there's no judgment. This is just what I'm noticing and maybe your partner is like, yeah, you know what? That does happen a lot. And this is why. Or it's like, wow, no one's ever told us that before. And I didn't realize that. And maybe there are some new things that I need to do and do differently. So approaching it with curiosity and being gentle for sure. And then as the partner, hearing it, trying to also remind yourself it's not a personal attack against your family. It's not saying that something that you did was completely wrong. It's just you two are kind of starting to navigate We've been a couple and we've been used to just us in this bubble. What do we look like as a couple when we're interacting with, you know, our families or our friends mm -hmm. as well? 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you mentioned earlier that, you know, even though the, the holidays can be an exciting time, it can also mm-hmm. be very stressful. So what are some of the things that you think often lead to tension in family members around the holidays? In my experience, at least what has come up sometimes has been people have different feelings around the holidays. So for some people, the holidays can bring up grief or some sadness, right? Because you're reminded of maybe people that you no longer have with you or you're feeling maybe alone and things like that. And if you're with a partner who's just super happy and excited about the holidays, there can be some tension because your partner's like, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you so sad or miserable? But you're like, hey, I'm going through something and I need some some patience too. So I think a big thing is just people's views on holidays. I think the expectation is that everyone just loves the holidays and it makes them feel all warm inside because I do love the holidays and it makes me feel warm inside, but understanding that that's not the exact same experience for everyone. And so having understanding around that, I think is a big deal. Another thing that comes to mind with tension around the holidays, I would say is certain boundaries. It can be really hard to set boundaries, especially with loved ones, especially as black women, we feel like I owe this person this, or it'd be selfish if I say no, or I have to do this. I have to handle everything and do it myself. And so when there's that added pressure, then you might feel resentful or you might feel like you're doing everything and you might snap at others or whatever the case may be. And that can cause some tension. And then also just the expectations, right? If there are expectations that people have of you that feel really heavy, like you're always the host or you always do certain things and let's say you're tired or you just need a break or you want help. You don't mind doing it, but you don't want to be the only one that can also cause a lot of tension. I appreciate you bringing up the idea of grief around the holidays. I think especially against our current backdrop, right? You know, so we know that we have lost so many people to COVID and just other things, you know, in the past couple of years. And I think for a lot of people, this may be their first year, maybe gathering again, if they are, right? Like, and so can you say a little bit about like how to manage grief or like how to keep expectations level as we are approaching the holiday season for people? Maybe this is their first holiday season after losing someone. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say to give yourself grace. Grief comes up unexpectedly. It comes in waves. You have to allow yourself to feel how you're feeling. Do not force yourself to be all happy-go-lucky and smiley if that's really just not how you're feeling. Obviously, there's other beliefs where people say, like, sometimes you just have to fake it till you make it or put a smile on your face. But I think it's really important that you surround yourself with at least one or two people who know and understand that you might not react or behave the same way that you typically do during the holiday season because you are processing the loss of someone or the loss of ideas, the loss of, you know, there's a lot of things that have changed in the past two and a half years, right? So I would say surrounding yourself with people who also get it and don't expect you to just move through it and be okay, but that allow you time to process it because Typically, when you have a space to cry it out or have a moment, then you feel like, okay, I'm not holding it in anymore. And then you're able to maybe go back and enjoy a family gathering or you're able to go back and enjoy something. But when you feel like you're trying to keep it in and bottle it up, then I think it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we have a couple of scenarios that our community sent in. So we told them that we're going to be talking about blending families for the holidays and ask them what questions they had. And so we have a couple of scenarios that I want to share with you to see if you have some feedback or tips that you would offer them. Okay. So the first one is my biological parents have been divorced for over 20 years. And during the time, I've always had to split my time between them on Christmas Day. Dad and stepmom in the morning and mom in the evening. Now that I have my own family, I'd like to invite all my parents over so we can spend quality time together. I'm nervous about bringing it up and even more nervous about making it happen. Mm, Okay. What comes to mind, because my parents are not together, they do get along and things like that, but I always have to go back and forth and I'm always making a joke like, well, do I have to pop out a kid for everyone to come see me? (laughs) Because this is a lot. So I definitely understand like wanting everyone to come to you because it's difficult always having to split, right? And so I think having a conversation, hopefully they've been divorced for a long enough time 
that maybe the focus is I want to spend this time with both of you and I want you both to be in the same space. You don't have to sit next to each other. You don't have to be all buddy buddy. But what I do want is both of my parents to be with me as I enter this new stage, as I've started my own family. If there's grandkids in the mix, grandparents love their grandkids. So if you focus on the kids really want to be able to have their grandma and grandpa there, hopefully that can soften it a bit too, but reminding them that what's really important is just having the quality time spent. They don't have to interact necessarily. They don't have to act as if everything is okay, but they can at least be cordial. And that's really all you're asking for. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, Joy, you know, I'm thinking about like when my husband and I got married, like the conversations around like, okay, how are we doing holidays now? Mm -hmm. Even before we had kids and what we've decided on is switching back and forth for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right. But I'm wondering in your work, because you do a lot of work with couples, are there other conversations that people are having or other arrangements people are making around the holidays that might be helpful for other people to think about? I think it's really also really about the expectations that you have. Right. Because maybe it's easier for everyone to come to you. I also think it depends on logistics, where people are located. But I think certain things that are working out is just one year we do this, next year we do that, like switching back and forth. That seems to be the consensus, what a lot of people do and what's fair. For other people, they decide. I had one couple I was thinking of, her family was like in the Virgin Islands. And so, I think Thanksgiving was really important to her family. And then Christmas, because her husband's birthday was near then, then that's just their holiday, right? And there's no pressure about we go back and forth or whatever the case may be. So I think it really depends on what are the holidays that are important. Another thing that's been helpful in what I've heard is maybe it's not always about the exact day. So for some families, maybe Christmas is a big deal. For other families, like I know for my uncle and his wife, her family, Christmas Eve is what's really important. So if you have certain things where it's like, we don't need to meet on the exact same day, but as long as it's within the time frame of the holidays, maybe we do something like instead of a Christmas party or a Christmas dinner, we do a New Year's Eve dinner or we do a Black Friday dinner instead of actually Thanksgiving. So I think it's mainly about like, what are the expectations and what days are really important? Because for some They're like, the day is still the same. As long as we still connect, have family, it doesn't have to be on the 24th of November. What if we do on the 28th, you know, and what works better for everyone else? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the other thing that this scenario made me think of, and you kind of talked about this too, is like creating new traditions, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so there are the traditions that come from our family of origins. But then, like you mentioned, like a lot of times once kids enter the picture, then there begins to be a reimagining of what the holidays look like. Mm -hmm. And so what kinds of like thoughts or, or things might you offer to couples who are thinking about creating their own tradition. So let's say I want to have dinner at the house with maybe just the kids, but I don't maybe want grandparents there, right? Like I only Mm -hmm. wanted to be a nuclear family. What kinds of guidelines would you offer for like making those kinds of decisions? So I would say each partner writing like what they would like, what's non-negotiable versus what has some wiggle room and finding some middle ground, some middle area, because maybe it's, I don't want the grandparents involved. I just want us And your partner is saying, dinner is really important. What if we have a big Christmas breakfast that's just us? And then for dinner, we go to my parents' house, right? Like, what if that would be a happy compromise? So I think it's important to find solutions that where both partners feel heard, both partners feel this is what's important to me. And then knowing yourself, what is a non-negotiable? Like, these are traditions that have to be passed down versus what are some areas where I have wiggle room? And this is also why I think premarital counseling is really helpful because it allows you to think about what do we want our life to look like? How do we want to celebrate certain things? How do we want to handle these things? Before they come up and cause tension, let's think about it. Obviously, you don't necessarily know exactly how you're going to handle things until you're in the situation. But I think if there's certain values, certain traditions that you know your partner really cares about and their family really cares about, you can have that conversation even before the holidays come up. 
Yeah, because ideally you, you would want to have these conversations before it's time to like send out the advice, right? Because mm-hmm. then the tension and the stress does get a little higher. So I appreciate you offering premarital counseling is an opportunity because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about premarital therapy, right? It's like, yeah, well, if we're going to therapy already, like we're doomed kind of thing. Exactly. But that is the space where you're having these kinds of conversations so that you can avoid. You just don't think about it until it's holiday time. And you're like, oh, I didn't know that was important to you. Exactly. And even when I say premarital, I just mean pre-marriage. It doesn't even have to be that you're engaged. I know for some people, they're like, if we're already in therapy and we're not even engaged yet, what is the problem? But to your point, it doesn't always have to be that there's a problem when you go to therapy. A lot of times therapy can be and should be preventative. It can be conversations about how we want to handle these things, learning skills and tools Instead of going to therapy when there's already been years of resentment, years of problems, and then it's like, I don't like this person. I don't know if we want to be together, you know? (laughs) So Mm -hmm. having these discussions and thinking about it beforehand can definitely be helpful. Obviously, when dating, I think it's, you don't know until you start to get into like dating seriously with that person. So if you're dating someone and this is the first time that you're meeting their family or blending families, I would just say going into it with an open experience Dating is all about learning your partner, learning what works for you and what doesn't. So being observant, not judgmental, (laughs) there's a difference, Um, but just being open to seeing what parts of the family impacted your partner, what made them, you know, who you want to be with today and things that you learn and things like that. I think the assumption is always there might be tension, but you'd be surprised because some families can be very opening and very welcoming and you can have a lot of fun. So going in with an open mind. Mm-hmm. So this is a perfect segue into scenario number two. Okay. So this one is my fiance's parents are flying out this holiday season to meet my parents for the first time. I'm nervous because my family doesn't have a traditional Christmas. My parents own their own business. And because they work so much, we don't celebrate together like other families are accustomed to. We eat dinner at 8 p.m. and might not open presents until 10. I want to show my future in-laws a good time, but I'm concerned that our holiday traditions won't cut it in comparison to their more traditional type of fun. Hmm. What comes to mind is you want to show them a good time. So it can be like, this is how we do it over here. And it's still fun. We're still doing the same things. It's just later in the day. So maybe it's like during the day we watch movies or we do other stuff and then we have a late dinner and then we open the presents. And especially if there's not little kids. Usually little kids are the only ones that are waking up at the crack of dawn to <laughs> open presents. So if there's no little kids in the mix, it can be a very exciting, like, no, it's not traditional, but this is our tradition and we welcome you to it. This is something that has worked for us. Maybe explaining like this is why it has become this way. It's not that we don't care about Christmas. This is just what works for us. And we invite you to, you know, have fun our way. And so I know for some people, I want to say my family would sometimes do like a movie day. My family loves a Christmas story. I don't, but they do. And so it's always on and things like that. So maybe it's like having a movie day or doing something before the presents, but giving them still a fun time. And if they're visiting, maybe it's taking them around different places in the area. I don't know where exactly they'd be going to, but a lot of places have like lights or certain things that you do around Christmas time. So maybe it's, we go out to dinner, we do these things late. And then once it's dark, we go, we take a drive around and see the lights or we do other things where it's still just as fun. It just doesn't have to be the chronological order of what they expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wonder if this might not be an opportunity for this couple to like start some of their own traditions, right? Or maybe a way to incorporate some of the families, the other families traditions, you know, so if they do more daytime activities, like are there things that they can do in the daytime before dinner, right? So maybe that's like baking things or Mm -hmm. decorating something or it might be an opportunity to kind of start some new stuff or to kind of blend both of the family's traditions. Yeah. Like maybe decorating the tree. Obviously, people might expect that the tree would be decorated before Christmas, but (laughs) that can be something where you frame it as we wanted this to be something we all do together. So we save decorating the tree for all of us to do it or baking is a good one. Decorating ornaments. Yeah, ornaments, gingerbread houses, if you're into that. You know, there's so many Christmas activities that you can do. And so just approaching it with, again, curiosity, but also it can be a fun experience, right? It doesn't have Mm -hmm. to be exactly what everyone is used to. And that's also how you can frame it as me and my fiance is we are starting 
this new life together. We appreciate this aspect of our traditions on this side, and we appreciate this aspect of traditions on this side, and this is our way of like remixing it. More from my conversation with Jordan after the break. You could watch the FIFA World Cup 2022 on TV, or you could go to Qatar and watch it live. Frito-Lay, the official USA snack of the FIFA World Cup 2022, is giving you the chance to win two tickets to the FIFA World Cup 2022 final by joining their Pass the Ball Challenge. Just grab a specially marked bag of Lay's, Cheetos, or Doritos, scan the QR code, and enter for a chance to win. But if you want more entries, you gotta pass the ball. The Golden World Soccer Ball, that is. The first people to add their picture to the Golden Ball will receive a one-of-a-kind collectible NFT commemorating the experience. And as you pass the ball to fellow soccer fans, you get more entries, plus custom swag and awesome prizes. Scan the QR code on specially marked bags of Lay's, Cheetos, or Doritos, or visit FritoLayScore.com to pass the ball now. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of 50 USDC. 18 plus grand prize entry deadline. 11 10, 22. Entries received after 11 10, 22 are only eligible for secondary prizes. See rules at FritoLayScore.com. Imagine the feeling of pulsing electric shocks. Sounds like a nightmare, right? While individual experiences may vary, it's how some people describe shingles. This painful blistering rash could interrupt your life for weeks. It could even force you to cancel social events or weekend plans. Over 99% of adults 50 years or older already carry the virus that causes shingles. One in three people will get it in their lifetime. Why wait? Ask your doctor or pharmacist about shingles today. Okay, maybe you've made a list but haven't checked it twice or made a list at all. Get ahead of the holiday shopping rush with Macy's Gift Finder. Whether it's for mom, grandpa, or your BFF, the Macy's Gift Finder makes it so easy to get them their dream gift at any budget, from Lux to $15 and under. Find something for everyone at Macy's.com slash gift finder. Know who you're looking for, but stumped on what to get them? Browse curated shops and gift lists for the jet setters, the one who has everything, the pet parent, plus so many more. And hey, if you're a proudly in the I can get my gift shopping done the night before camp, treat yourself. Maybe you need a new set of fluffy house slippers or want to set the holiday vibe with ornaments, lights, and wreaths. And don't forget your favorite R&R essentials, all of your favorite skincare products. Again, check out all the gifts to feel December ready at Macy's.com slash gift finder. All right, our third scenario. Okay. I'm a single mother and I really want my child to be able to spend the holidays with her siblings. Her father has two other children with two different mothers. And I think it would be really fun for us all to get the kids together to do something. I'm nervous because there's tension among the parents, but I want to figure out how we can blend families to make these memories for our kids. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I would say it seems like I'm imagining the tensions maybe between the moms and the dad. Don't know for sure, but if she's not feeling there's tension between her and anyone, maybe reaching out of, I think this would be a great idea for the kids. I want to do this thing. I want to get all the kids together so they can celebrate. If you feel uncomfortable in the space, again, I'm not sure what the relationship is, but if you trust me, you can drop your kid off if you don't want to stay, but I have these things planned or I want us to have a movie night or bake cookies or do something where the kids can spend time together. Because even though we are not with this man anymore, or even though we have differences or we disagree, our children should be the priority. And we want to make sure that they feel included, but also like they have each other, right? And especially if she's a single mom and say it's just her and her child, you want to make sure that your child has like fun things to be around. He or she is not the only child in the situation. And so that could be, I'm sure, the goal of making sure you're spending time with your siblings, you're spending time with people that are your age and it being fun. And hopefully the moms are in agreement. And I would see that as a really big effort to put differences aside and really just focus on the betterment of the kids. Because I think blended families obviously can happen. The parents just have to be able to remember that the children are the priority and not get too involved with their ego or their hurt or any feelings that come up for them. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I agree with you. I think that this would be a beautiful scenario, yeah. you know, if they're able to pull this off. And I see this as something happening either Christmas Eve or maybe like a day or two before, because mm-hmm. I would imagine, you know, everybody has their own individual families that they may want to do things with. But it could be a cool kind of like yearly tradition that they get together every year, two days before Christmas and like have a sleepover with matching pajamas and all the moms get together and like do decorations and they have presents that they know they open like from each other and like I think that that actually would be a beautiful kind of offering and like you mentioned if there's somebody like one of the other moms where there's not tension with could they open the invitation and this could even be a great way to ease some of that tension right Mm -hmm. like I know there's been issues between us in the past but this almost is an olive branch I think of recentering the kids like you mentioned which should be the priority and obviously there's similarities if you two or three have chosen to have a child but also with this one person maybe there's certain things that you all enjoy doing with that person that maybe you have similarities but the biggest similarity is that you all are mothers right and you most likely want to prioritize your kid and make them feel like they are a part of something I think sometimes tension comes especially with blended families where it can feel like this kid gets more than this kid or this person gets more so if you focus on I want us all to be together I want us all to do something. Maybe the kids have a movie night. Maybe we as the moms, we have some hot chocolate or some wine, not condoning alcoholism, but, you know, we do something that's just us and that we have fun and we make space for the children. Or maybe it's after Christmas and the children get to bring all their toys together and play together or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that could be a very cool. Yeah. And a tradition like they could keep going for sure. All right. So one final scenario. Okay. So this one says, I'm spending Thanksgiving with my dad's side of the family this year. I barely know that side of the family and I'm nervous because I've always felt like my mom discouraged us from spending time with them because they're a little ratchet. However, I want to know my people. And though I'm almost 40, I still want to try. Mm -hmm. I feel crazy asking people what their names are, but this is where we are. I'm embarrassed that I don't know them better. Yeah, I think the biggest thing to do is own that and not own it as though it's your fault, but own it as unfortunately I didn't get the experience to grow up with you all. So I do feel bad for not knowing this, but I really do want to learn now. And in my opinion, it's never too late. As long as you have breath in your body and you are able to meet people and do things, it's never too late. And I think that's beautiful that you're still choosing to spend that time, even if it feels awkward or uncomfortable. And ideally, hopefully they would be welcoming in the idea of it wasn't you who, as a kid, you weren't choosing what you were doing or who you were spending time with. And now you're making this choice to spend time with us and get to know us. And we really appreciate it. Obviously, again, I think especially in the Black community, there can be the differences in like how we appear. Black people as a culture, there's a spectrum. So if she is saying or defining them as a little more ratchet... I imagine maybe she's wondering that it might feel uncomfortable or they might think that she's bougie or snobby or whatever the case may be. And so, again, with openness, with curiosity, but also just being transparent of this is how I do things or this is how I was raised. And I wasn't able to meet you all or have these experiences, but I really want to have these experiences now. And please tell me what I can. I know for myself, sometimes if I'm speaking with my grandparents or I'm wanting to gain family information, I'll say, is it okay if I record this? I really want to, you know, remember this or take lots of pictures or whatever the case may be. So I think going into it, obviously you're going to be nervous, but recognizing it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. And you're using this opportunity to learn more and to be a part of this family and add to your extended family. And so approaching it with excitement as well. Yeah, I would add to that. If you're on Facebook, I think Facebook has a lot of downfalls, but one of the upsides is I think a lot of family members are Mm -hmm. often on Facebook. And so it's it's very possible that you can do a lot of research before you even go, right? So finding out who cousins are and, you know, so that may be helpful and may help you to feel a little more comfortable in the space so that you know whose name is what. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, I would also suggest maybe like finding one person that you're feeling closest to. So is there a cousin or somebody on your dad's side who you can 
can do like some prep sessions with, right? Okay, so I'm wanting to do more of this. Tell me who this is. What's the story here? You know, is there any kind of drama in the background that I need to be aware of? So getting yourself ready, I think, for the situation, because I agree with you, like it wasn't necessarily her fault that she didn't necessarily grow up with them. But I think going into it with curiosity and saying, I want to do this now, maybe even apologizing, like, I'm sorry it's taken so long, but I really want to get to know you all. I think that that could be something that makes her feel more comfortable too. And even when you talked about if there's one person in the family, I imagine if it's her dad's side, maybe she's always had a relationship with her dad or hopefully he is more accessible. And that can be the leeway too of, I know I haven't really been able to spend time with your side of the family, but I want to get to know people more. What are some things that I should be aware of? Who is who in that way too? So yeah, I think that's Mm -hmm. a great idea, especially the Facebook Mm -hmm. one. Between Facebook, Instagram, (laughs) tagged photos, you could probably put together a family tree. (laughs) Right. Far more is out there about us than we even want to know. (laughs) For sure. (sighs) So, you know, we talked about like all of these things and how to kind of navigate all of this. But I think it is important, especially around the holidays, because it is also often one of the times of the year where we like have like a significant amount of time off for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so I think also thinking about how we can get in some self-care and take care of ourselves during the holidays are important. So what suggestions would you have for people about like how to fit time in, even if they're hosting, right? So let's say the whole family is coming to your house. Like how do you still get in some alone time? How do you sneak away so that you still have some time for yourself during all of this? Yeah, I think a great way is depending on the person, maybe it looks like waking up a little earlier. So before the house gets lively and everyone's awake, you have some alone time that way. Or maybe it looks like just saying, hey, I need a moment. I'm going to step away for a second. Maybe it doesn't look like how it would typically look because you have a whole bunch of guests or people in your house. But maybe it's you go somewhere and listen to your favorite song or you go take a walk really quickly or you have a moment with your partner because sometimes with family in town, maybe it can feel like you and your partner are disconnected. So finding out what self-care looks like for you in that moment and what you're needing. Maybe you are just needing quiet time to be alone, but maybe you're needing to feel like me and my partner are still a team. And even though there's a whole bunch of people in our space, we have this connection and we're here. So I would definitely say being transparent about it. It doesn't have to be in a, I need a break from y'all in a rude way or anything (laughs) like that, (laughs) but just, Hey, you know what? I've been cooking all day. I'm going to take a second and go upstairs to rest or, Before we go out and see the Nutcracker or watch this movie, I'm going to take a moment really quickly to get ready or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. More from my conversation with Jordan after the break. This is one way to pass the ball. And this is another. The Frito-Lay Pass the Ball Challenge. Frito-Lay, the official USA snack of the FIFA World Cup 2022, is giving you the chance to win two tickets to the FIFA World Cup 2022 final by joining their Pass the Ball Challenge. To enter, just scan the QR code on specially marked bags of Lay's, Cheetos, and Doritos, and look for the Golden World Soccer Ball. Be one of the first to add your picture to the Golden Ball to receive a -a one-of-a-kind collectible NFT. Then pass the ball to other soccer fans and play daily games to score additional entries and a chance to win custom swag and awesome prizes. So grab a specially marked bag of Lay's, Cheetos, or Doritos, or visit Frito-LaySCore.com and pass the ball now for your chance to win two tickets to the FIFA World Cup 2022 final in Qatar. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of 50 US DC. 18 plus grand prize entry deadline, 11 10, Entries received after 11 10, are only eligible for secondary prizes. See rules at Frito-LaySCore.com. Imagine a sharp, stabbing pain on your skin. Sounds like a nightmare, right? While individual experiences may vary, it's how some people describe shingles. This painful blistering rash could interrupt your life for weeks. It could even force you to cancel social events or weekend plans. Over 99% of adults 50 years or older already carry the virus that causes shingles. One in three people will get it in their lifetime. Why wait? Ask your doctor or pharmacist about shingles today. Okay, maybe you've made a list but haven't checked it twice or made a list at all. Get ahead of the holiday shopping rush with Macy's Gift Finder. Whether it's for mom, grandpa, or your BFF, the Macy's Gift Finder makes it so easy to get them their dream gift at any budget, from Lux to $15 and under. 
find something for everyone at Macy's.com slash gift finder. Know who you're looking for, but stumped on what to get them? Browse curated shops and gift lists for the jet setters, the one who has everything, the pet parent, plus so many more. And hey, if you're a proudly in the I can get my gift shopping done the night before camp, treat yourself. Maybe you need a new set of fluffy house slippers or want to set the holiday vibe with ornaments, lights, and wreaths. And don't forget your favorite R&R essentials, all of your favorite skincare products. Again, check out all the gifts to feel December ready at Macy's.com slash gift finder. So I think something else with that is that our wellness practices often get disrupted, right? So if we're traveling, maybe we don't have access to our gym or the equipment that we have at home. So what tips or strategies would you offer for how to kind of stay connected to our wellness practices during this time? I'm often the one traveling because I'm single with no kids. So I have to go to everyone else. And some things I know will get disrupted. Like I've been going to bar class. Obviously, I can't do that when I'm on vacation. But there's other parts of my wellness or my morning routine that I can do anywhere. So maybe it looks like downloading a certain app. Like I use the Shine app for mindfulness and to practice gratitude. So even if I'm not home, I can access that. Or maybe there's something that replaces what you would normally do. If you're used to going to the gym and you don't have that outlet, maybe it looks like going for a walk. That way you're still getting some energy, still moving your body, still getting some movement. So I think tweaking what your wellness practice looks like, it could also look like inviting others to join you, right? So maybe it feels like I don't have time to step away, but you know what? Maybe someone else wants to go for a walk with me. Maybe that can be a way to connect with an in-law or connect with a family member that I'm close to and we just want some time just to ourselves to talk for a bit. So I would definitely say adding people in if possible, incorporating or finding some aspects of your wellness routine that can be done regardless of where you are and prioritizing that and switching up or making some compromises or concessions that maybe my wellness won't look the exact same, but it can still bring me the same type of feelings. So Jordan, when you mentioned you're single with no kids, so you're the one who's always having to travel, Mm -hmm. it made me think, you know, at some point you might decide that you don't want to do that. Or I think we have heard from community members who have said that they are like tired of being the one hosting and they don't want to do it anymore. So they actually just want to travel during the Mm -hmm. holidays and they don't want to do any of that. So what often comes up is how do you have this conversation like with your mama and your grandma saying that you are not coming home for Christmas? (laughs) How do we have this conversation? And then I think the other part is like, how do you deal with the fallout, right? Of people maybe being upset or having hurt feelings. So I haven't had to have the conversation myself yet. Because so far, I haven't necessarily minded to the point where I'd want to stop. I do think that it's a conversation of, hey, it gets exhausting. Or maybe offering some alternatives. I'm tired. I can't afford to travel. You know, air <laughs> prices have been very extensive. So maybe it's either I can't afford or I just simply don't want to. And that's a reason enough. What would it be like for you all to come visit me instead? Or what would it be like if I come two weeks later and we do something else then? But for this holiday, I just want time to myself. Or I want to spend time with friends or a lot of people, like you said, are just they want to travel to an island or or be on a beach because it's cold in November and December. So maybe it's a conversation of I really enjoy spending time with you all and I love this family. And while that's true, I also need a break. And this is the only time I can do it because this is when most people take time off. And this is what it may look like. Maybe we can still create some family traditions. We can still speak on FaceTime. I'll still be there for us to have our conversations. But I am physically exhausted from always being the one that is expected to make the concessions or to make the changes. If you are the one that's always hosting, then it can be like, hey, let's let's pass the baton. Why don't we switch it up? Why don't we rotate? Maybe there's siblings and I usually host. What if my sister hosts this year and the next year my brother hosts and then the year after that is back to me? Or what if we switch it around and make it a little more fun where, where it's not always the pressure on me because I will burn out. And would you rather me be bitter and angry and resentful when we're having a family dinner and miserable? Or would you rather us just pause and reset, refigure out what our traditions are going to look like? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I think that is important, right? Because I think we get so stuck in the rut of just doing what we've always done and we Mm -hmm. don't stop to think like, hey, I actually don't have to do this anymore if I don't want to. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an important thing to consider. For sure. And the fallout, there may be some, right? Because people, especially grandmas, (laughs) tend to want things the way they want. They want to see their grandbabies. They want things how they want them. And just recognizing, hopefully, your family can take the tradition and the expectations aside and hear that you're, in a sense, crying out for help. Like, I cannot do this anymore. I don't have the capacity to. And I know that this maybe messes up what we're used to, but I need this break in order for us to keep flowing and functioning well as a family. Mm Mm-hmm. So what do you think that non-Black family members can do to support the Black women and girls in their lives during this holiday season? Mm -hmm. I think be understanding to, and it might be difficult to be understanding, but recognize that there are added pressures that we as Black women face, especially if we're moms, but especially if we're also single, and especially if we're the oldest daughter or the oldest in the family. There are just added pressures where people expect us to do it all. And maybe as the non-Black partner or as a partner observing first year, you can just see, but then validate us and let us know you're not crazy for feeling this way. I see that your family members are putting a lot of pressure on you, or I notice that this is happening. This must be really hard for you. Is there anything that I can do? to help you? Would you want me to respond to these invites? Would you want me to help you make the food so that you're not doing it yourself? Like just finding a way where you can be a helping hand and also a space for them to vent and complain too, right? Because again, there's this expectation that everyone should be just happy and excited about the holidays. And when you are faced with a lot of the pressure and a lot of the planning and a lot of the making sure stuff gets done, it's hard to do that. And you may just need someone to let you be mad and and cry it out for a second and to hug you and and provide you that comfort and also let you know, hey, you're doing a good job or I see you or I see all that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So you mentioned earlier like that you like to sometimes record conversations like when you're talking to elders in the family. And I think that that's such a beautiful idea, especially around the holidays, because that's Mm -hmm. often when a lot of us are together. What other kinds of things would you suggest for people or that you hope people don't lose sight of as they are gathering with family this holiday season? I think the biggest one is obviously, especially with COVID, life is short and that What's most important is the time that we are spending, not always about the gifts, not always about like who cooked what that is important, but (laughs) focusing on, you know, really just the time that we're spending. I'm really big on capturing memories and moments. So I take a lot of pictures or record a lot of videos or voice notes because I'm really close with all four of my grandparents and it's been a huge blessing to have all four of them still. And so I try to make sure I'm not taking that for granted. Maybe it looks like, you know, making sure that you're not taking your siblings for granted or your parents for granted because anything can happen at any moment and really focusing on, we have this time that we spent together. Let's be present. Let's try to maybe put our phones down. Let's try to maybe not focus solely on TV or if we're going to focus on the TV, it's like a, a movie or something that we all picked out to watch together. I think another big thing Again, especially with COVID, we probably missed physical touch and hugs and being able to like see a family member and hold them and spend time with them in that way too. And so really cherishing that I think is really important as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really just being present. I think you said it beautifully there. Mm -hmm. So Jordan, where can we stay connected with you? What is your website as well as any social media handles you'd like to share? Oh, sure. My website is www.therapyismyjam.com. You can also find me on the Therapy for Black Girls website because I am an author. So I have a nice little page of all the <laughs> articles that I've written. And my social media is at Therapy is My Jam as well on Instagram and Twitter. Perfect. We will be sure to include all of that in the show notes. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today, Jordan. I appreciate it. No problem. It was my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so glad Jordan was able to share her expertise with us today. To learn more about her and her work, visit the show notes at therapyforblackgirls.com slash session 282. And don't forget to text two of your girls and tell them to check out the episode right now. If you're looking for a therapist in your area, 
check out our therapist directory at therapyforblackgirls.com slash directory. And if you want to continue digging into this topic or just be in community with other sisters, come on over and join us in the sister circle. It's our cozy corner of the internet designed just for black women. You can join us at community.therapyforblackgirls.com. This episode was produced by Frida Lucas and Elise Ellis, and editing was done by Dennison Bradford. Thank y'all so much for joining me again this week. I look forward to continuing this conversation with you all real soon. Take good care. Do you want to win two tickets to the FIFA World Cup 2022 in Qatar? Frito Lay is giving you the chance to make history by joining their Pass the Ball Challenge. Explore the ever growing community on the Golden World Soccer Ball. Then, pass the ball to fellow fans to score additional entries. Scan the QR code on specially marked bags of Lays, Cheetos, or Doritos, or visit FritoLayScore.com. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of 50 USDC. 18 plus grand prize entry deadline 11 10 22. Entries received after 11 10 22 are only eligible for secondary prizes. See rules at FritoLayScore.com. Ford Motor Company is committed to moving forward together with new all electric vehicles that offer an efficient and exhilarating driving experience. Ford is going above and beyond to not only create the smartest, most connected EVs and technology, but to make sure that customers are well-educated on how to move forward with electric energy. Ford customers will also have easy and simple access to charge, whether you charge at home with the overnight plug-in Ford mobile charger or on the road. Journey into the future with Ford's lineup of electric vehicles with many affordable options to choose from. Head over to Ford.com to learn more. Built Ford Proud. When the world gets in the way of your music, try the new Bose QuietComfort earbuds too. Next-gen earbuds uniquely tuned to the shape of your ears. They use exclusive Bose technology that personalizes the audio performance to fit you, delivering the world's best noise cancellation and powerfully immersive sound, so you can hear and feel every detail of the music you love. Bose QuietComfort Earbuds 2. Sound shaped to you. To learn more, visit Bose.com.